All right, moving on to those Phillies. Phillies had a very interesting week, Scott. The Mets series Oof. trying their best series. to blow games. So give us the state of the Phillies this week. Uh, you know, I'm feeling good. They swept the Mets. Uh, that, that's what was important to me after the atrocious series against the Orioles. Um, it's always good to beat the Mets. I hate that franchise. The Mets are, are a team that can hit. But outside of DeGrom, they have no pitcher. It's, a, it's an atrocious, atrocious team outside of DeGrom's uh, starting. But they hit the ball. Conforto can hit. Um, Dom Smith was hitting the ball. Robbie Cano's hitting out. Pete Alonso's starting to break out of it. But, yeah, the Phillies, they hit the ball really well. Bryce Harper's on fire. Um did you lose me again? Or no, you're no, good. I just, uh, okay. <laughs> um, Bryce Harper's on fire. He's on an eight game hitting streak, hitting like four sixty over that break. Rail Muto is the man. They brought up Alec Bohm, which I'm really excited about. Um, so they're they're still a team that's gonna not blow you away, but they're in the hunt again, and the National League East is wide open right now. Yeah, the, the that Marlins division. Still, that to, yeah, anyone can the, win that division, really. Yeah, because the point. Marlins are still in first place, but I can't imagine they're going to finish there. The no. Cunha just went on IL for the Braves. Mm-hmm. Um, Nick Markakis just went on to the IL for the Braves because there's a chance that he might have COVID now. And the fact that the Braves, um, their pitching staff is just decimated with injuries. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's a wide open division. The, the like they, when they play, the, when they had that two game series against the Yankees, the, the, the pitching was not that. I mean, it sucks that Marquez and Acuna didn't play in that series because they're on the DL or the IL. But you know, it's just kind of like, kind of like the Red Sox, not as bad. But they really don't have starting pitching to measure up with, you know, what the Nationals or the Phillies have, and the Nationals have been struggling too. I feel like that whole division is just a complete mess. Yeah, we, we all hyped that division up before the start of the season as being one of the best in baseball. And it's, yeah, we did. It's been a struggle. Because, um, and, and for good reason, because of every single team in that division, other than the Marlins, but those other four teams, if they all like would play to what their talent level would suggest, that's a very good division. That's a very tough division. But they seemingly all at the same time have been awful in their own way. Yeah, it, it's been a struggle they're they're all finding ways to uh not be good and but you know that keeps the door open for everybody so that's why i'm feeling too bad about the phillies um at the moment because anything could happen really i i nothing would shock me at this point with this team the nl east is currently the atlanta braves are at first uh they did move up at first percentage points wise they have a 583 winning percentage miami's at 563 at nine and seven the Phillies are at eight and nine. The Mets are at ten and fourteen, four games back, and Washington's four games back. So from first to last place is a difference of four games, which is crazy. Even so is that in the a makings of a good division games. or a bad division. Well, bad because you know the first place team's only four games above five hundred. Or they're all the other each other well. All the other divisions are at least seven or eight games over five hundred. That is true. Especially considering the Bra- that the AL East is very top-heavy. There's only two good teams. The Braves are the only team in the division that have a positive run differential. They're at plus 16. Miami's even. Philly's minus three. The Mets are minus 14. And Washington's minus five. The Marlins are really surprising me. Same thing with the Orioles. I mean, I, I know it's early. It's a small sample size. But I, what was that graphic this morning? Uh, oh, Pete. Pete Savage posted on his, I think it was a Snapchat or his Instagram, and it was like comparing Cody Bellinger, um, Mookie Betts, and I forget who the third guy for the Dodgers was. And then it was like the Orioles' top guys, and the Orioles had them beat in terms of like the top four guys. I was impressed with the season. Orioles. The Orioles hit. They might they don't have a ton of pitching, but those guys hit the ball hard. They're very aggressive in their approach. Hanser Alberto was absolutely smoking the ball against the Phillies. Uh, same with Anthony Santander. They're, they're just really aggressive because, you know what, they don't have anything to lose. That's, yeah, so, that's a fair point. Yeah, that's the whole point. They, they can go out there and just say, hey, we're here to play. We're going to 
bust our, you know, our tails to see what we can do. Um, and it worked. It works for them. I don't know exactly what their record is, but I mean, they're not going to pitch, but they're going to hit. Baltimore the is 12 and 10. They are four games behind the Yankees. They've lost Pies their last. Bet not looking great. Their, their under over total was 20 and a half. They got to win eight <laughs> more games. That's it. We had a, we had a, kind of a small discussion of if they'd even win 10 games. Yeah, this is bad. Real bad so, takes coming out of this uh, base hit ball. Good for, good for them. I don't think it's going to hold in September. Same with the Marlins, but, you know, it's a good story. 